This is an example of the wiggly worm that we're going to make in this tutorial. Let's get straight into it. Hi guys, today we're going to make a wiggly worm animation. First thing you want to do is select your cube, click on the modify properties. We're going to add a subdivision surface modifier to make it nice and round. You can select how many, what level you want. I'm putting them both on four and then I'm going to right click and shade smooth. It's not perfectly round, but that's kind of what I'm going for. And then I'm going to add an array. I'm going to press numpad 7 to in top orthographic view. And then I'm going to press shift A. And I am going to choose an empty. Now that I've created an empty, I'm going to click on the cube again that looks like a sphere. Deselect relative offset. And expand open object offset, select it, and then choose the empty. And change the count to 8. I'm going to zoom out of here. I'm going to select the empty. I'm going to press G to grab the empty to move it and I'm going to press Y to lock it on the Y axis and I need to choose a starting position. Right, so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to press I and I'm going to select location and rotation and we've created our first keyframe. This is the starting position and I'm going to use auto keying in this process. So I'll click that. And the other thing I want to do before I move on, I just want to make sure my camera is in the right position. So I'm going to hover over this in top orthographic view. I'm going to press Control Alt Numpad 0. I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to press G and just get it in place. This way I know at the very least that is correct. Now I can deselect the camera view. It's in the right place. And I'm going to select the empty again. And I'm going to move the, think of each second as 30 frames roughly. And we're going to rotate this by pressing R, rotating the empty to about, to about there. And it auto keys because we had that selected. Then we're going to go to 60. And we're going to rotate again, press R, and rotate the other way. And we're just going to make it an irregular motion where it's not too consistent like it's a rhythm. So now I'm only going to go 10 frames, make it rotate all the way down there. And to make sure it's not just going back and forth, I'm going to rotate it to about there. And then rotate it back like that. And the, the smaller the gap between these frames, the faster the motion. So just keep, keep that in mind. And now we can rotate it the other way. And yeah, making, making a wiggly worm is possibly easier than one might think. And yeah, it's that easy. And I'm creating a real irregular pattern just to try and create something unique. You play around with it to choose the pattern that you like or rhythm that you like to make it more believable. In my case, it's not really more believable. It's just I'm having fun. And that's what Blender is really about. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click the end here at 215. It doesn't need to be any longer than that. And uh, I'm going to press play. And this is the motion we have. So now we've created our animation. Just like as simple as that, a bit of a violent wiggly worm. Let's uh, select the cube, click on the materials, choose a color for the worm. I'm going to choose green. I'm going to click on the render icon to see how it'll look when it's rendered. And I'm going to increase the subdivision surface to 0 0.05. Zoom in. I'm not buying that. Let's change this to a darker green and make this 0 0.1. And the subsurface basically allows light to, tr to travel within it a little bit to make it look, look a little bit more realistic. It will probably look even better if I choose a 
different color. Choose a color that you like, have fun. There we go. It's an odd color. Sorted. So it's as simple as that. I hope you had fun and please like and subscribe.